Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Boker Quaken. Uh, this is the full size, and this is the titanium version, for those of you curious. They have this in a ton of different versions, and also in a miniature size. Um, for you to look at, it's not really that small, but it's called the Mini. But we'll go ahead and uh, get into it. Quick things to note, I did buy this secondary market. Um, these are anodized titanium scales, so I didn't do this anodization. Um, someone else did it and paid for it and all that stuff. I picked it up after all that had been done. So I'm not going to touch too much on the color of the scales and also the blade centering. Um, I fixed it a little bit, but it was pretty close. I can't comment on factory blade centering. Also, the edge is aftermarket as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, jump into it. So first we'll go over some just some quick specs of the knife. Um, the closed length is going to be 4.875 inches, so almost 5 inch knife handle. Um, a lot to get a, get a hold on there. Um, I really don't have any issues gripping this. Um, the blade length is 3.5, so you can see that's going to be about the legal limit in a lot of places. Um, and the edge on here is kind of a mirror edge, it's beautiful. But um, 3.5 inch blade, 4.875 inch handle makes an 8.375 inch overall length knife. Um, the weight of this is 4. Point, I'm sorry, 5.4 ounces. So very very heavy knife. Um, even though it looks rather svelte, it's not really um, because of the thickness and the weight, which we'll touch on later. But um, very very beautiful knife aesthetically. I'm really happy with it very interesting. Um, that'll about do it for the specs. Let's go ahead and get into some size comparisons. Um, so let's see. Go ahead and bring out uh, closed knives first. We'll go ahead and bring out the uh, Benchmade proper and then the Spyderco Introvert here. And then let's see if I can fit one more in frame here. I'll bring out the spider coat bird finch too. So you can see here it's a fairly long knife um, which is obvious by that handle measurement. Um, I'm gonna bring out two more here and this is the sheathed SC Azula so a fairly common fixed blade so just for reference if you guys have one of those it's a nice size comparison and then the uh, Sandrin Moo 7063 for kind of a budget size comparison Let's go ahead and do the um, open comparisons now. So there's your Boker Quaken. Go and get out the Benchmade proper here. And I think the Introvert's going to be about the only other one we can fit in frame on this. Um, well, maybe I can fit the, the Finch too. Let's see. Sure. So there's there's a nice size comparison. You can see open it's extremely long. Um, very very large knife. We'll go ahead and unsheath the SC Azula here and compare it. Um, this is the blue edition of it, um, which actually looks kind of nice with the handle. Um, but you can see there the SC unsheath is fairly small next to it. And the Sanremo 7063, I'll show that as well. So again, you know, um, fairly long knife, very heavy knife. Um, let's go ahead and get into the like, neutral, and dislike of the Boker Plus Quaken. Okay, first up, first thing I like really is the action. Um, very smooth. This uses the IKBS ball bearing system. Um, it's like the Icoma Court bearing system or something like that. So I, what I just said the first time, my KBS bearing system is redundant. But um, the action is very, very smooth. Um, it fires fairly reliably, um, barring the flipper tab, which we'll touch on later. But um, very, very smooth knife, very, very nice knife. Um, feels great to open and to close. It is not drop shut smooth, but it's pretty freaking close. And with a little nudging, you can certainly get it to close that way. Um, let's see, next up, the feel in the pocket. So while this knife, yes, is fairly large, 
in the pocket, it's pretty small, um, just because of how narrow it is. Let me bring back out the proper here for just a moment. So the proper is a really small in pocket knife as well. But if you compare the two, the proper is really more wide than the than the Quaken, um, which you certainly do notice. The Quaken's longer, yes, but it's so slim that you really don't notice it until you look at it that way. And then you can tell it's, you know, it's a significantly thicker knife. So we'll, we'll get to the thickness of it later, but um, the, in pocket it takes up very little space. You stick it in there and it, there's really not much pocket space it's taking up. It's just to the side nicely. Um, I don't really worry about it getting in the way or damaging anything because the tab doesn't stick out too far. It's kind of curved, which is nice for in the pocket, but not for much else. Next thing I like is the clip. And let me preface this. I prefer deep carry clips. Um, specifically, what I like about the clip is just the springiness. Um, it's very springy, but very sturdy. Very easy to slip up over a pocket, but it's not an ergonomic issue. There's no hot spots caused by the clip. Uh, it's it's pretty nice. I'm definitely looking into getting an aftermarket clip for it, but you know for now it works just fine. All right, and the last thing that I like is the styling of the knife. Um, I find it to be very very classy looking. Um, just the kind of geometric looking shape. Closed, it's gorgeous. It is beautiful when it's closed. I love this knife closed. It's fantastic all the corners and everything, it's just, it's its great. Um, you can sit down this knife just about any way, it's gonna stay straight up. Um, even open, to be honest, I really like it a lot, I know some people don't, but I i really like the, just the overall appearance of the knife is fantastic. Um, it looks very gentlemanly. If you're going for a gentleman-like knife though, I'd really go with the mini version, because this is, again, this is a, a pretty large knife. Uh, it may not look huge in my hand, but it's 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 pretty big. Um, so if you're going for something to use around the office, you know, get get the mini miniature version. Um, I probably will pick it up at some point, maybe in the copper. Um, that is a Going Gear exclusive. If you're curious, quite expensive as well. Um, but we'll touch on price in just a moment. Um, let's see. Go ahead and go on to the neutral. Just gonna go ahead and talk about price. Um, let me preface this by saying I paid nowhere near retail for this, not even close, M less than half, much less than half retail, um, which is the main reason I picked this up. Um, retail though, this particular version goes for anywhere between 150 and 160 dollars. Now, do I think that's worth it? Um, not really. You can get much better knives for $160. Just the sheer competition out there is insane. Unless you really like the styling or the blade shape or something like that. You know, you can do better. Um, VG10 steel, which is just fine. You know, I really enjoy VG10. I, It's a great steel. But for $160, you can get S35VN now. Um and VG10 just kind of falls to the wayside at that point. Also, you do get titanium scales on this particular version, but the liners are, are steel. At a, again, at $160, you'd think full titanium construction at this point. But you know what? It's okay. Um, it's, it's a pretty solid knife. I really can't, I'm not gonna say it's not worth $160, but competition-wise, you can do better. That said, it's still a great knife, um, fantastic. And the smaller versions can go right around 100, which I would probably recommend. Um, they have some very interesting carbon fiber versions and stuff like that, so this is really nice. Um, this one isn't bad though. I uh, do have some demerits on it, but for what I paid, I'm really, really happy with it. For 160 bucks, I'd be much less so. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, jump into the next thing I'm kind of neutral towards, the disassembly. So the Icoma Corp bearing system, the um, IKBS that it mentions right here. Let's see if I can get that, that focused. There we go. So what that is, you can kind of see in the icon there, um, a bunch of little circles. 
instead of using bearings, like caged bearings in this knife, it, they're just loose. So they sit in kind of a ramp all the way around the blade on both sides. Um, maybe, you know, 30 to 40 of them on each side. They're really, really tiny, and they just sit there. What that means is when you disassemble this knife, they're going to go everywhere. I have not disassembled it that far <laughs> because of that. I, you can take off the scales relatively easily, so if you don't want to get anodized, that's very easy to do. Clip's easy to remove. Um, it, I don't believe it voids your warranty or anything like that. If you disassemble it, don't hold me to that, but I don't believe so. Um, but the IKBS makes it very, very smooth, but holy crap. I feel very sorry for anyone who has to disassemble this knife. Last thing I'm kind of neutral towards is the branding. On this side it says Boker Plus. That's fine. Super small, doesn't bother me a bit. This side where it says VG10 really small right there, that's fine with me too. What bothers me is this. Um, Burnley, which is already curved, they could have just reverse curved it and put it right there. Or you know, put Burnley right here on the flipper tab or something small like that. But you have Burnley and then you have IKBS, really large. And if you compare it to the Boker Plus on the other side, it's just kind of distasteful. Um, I really don't like it that much. I kind of wish they'd either made it smaller or, you know, whatever. And the IPKBS comes up pretty far on the blade, um, which I'm not a big fan of either. Okay, on to the dislike. My number one dislike with this knife, and really something that I really, really hate, is this flipper tab. Um, let me bring out the Spyderco Introvert, which is not a perfect example of a flipper tab because it's freaking enormous, with good reason. But you can see, with a flipper tab, you're meant to kind of get your finger in there, and then you can flip it, right? It's curved upward to kind of help your, or curved flat typically, either way, to kind of help your finger get purchase and flip it. Well, this one... It's curved downward, so your finger can slip off really, really well when you try to flip it. Which is more than often what happens when you try to open it this way. So what I've started doing is taking the first knuckle on my finger here and flipping it that way. It flips very reliably, but it's super annoying. And even when it's reversed, your finger is able to slip up on the blade. So really, I wish they had taken that and kind of flipped it. That way it'd be a nice finger guard. And flipping that would be ten times easier than flipping this. So just keep that in mind. Oh, that flipper tab really is the biggest demerit on this knife, in my opinion. The rest of the design is fantastic, but that flipper tab is just ridiculous. Next thing I dislike is the weight. This is a super, super heavy knife as far as I'm concerned. Um, my ideal carry weight is under three ounces. This is almost, you know, it's over five, five and a half ounces. That's really, really heavy. That's, that's you know, some multi-tools weigh less than that. It's, it's insane. My skeletal tool, I think, is, you know, right around there. And for that, it's... If I'm paying for a titanium knife, I don't want the scales to be titanium. Just laid on top of steel liners. I want the liners and the scales to be titanium. Or if it's a liner lock, just make them titanium. All this extra material in here that you see just adds so much weight to this knife it's ridiculous it's super super heavy and they really could have avoided that it's just it's not I, I don't think it was necessary at all just gonna leave it at that um next thing related kind of to that weight is the thickness of the knife. Because there are liners and scales, this knife is very, very thick. Just compare it here to the introvert, which is a fairly thick knife as well. That that difference is insane. Like, why is that there? And especially when you compare it to something really thin, like the, the Benchmade proper, there's a lot of extra. It's just unnecessary. All right, last thing that it's like is the blade thickness. I'm just gonna set that right there, so you can kind of see. Um, this blade is very, very, very thick for a flipper knife. Um, I'm just gonna bring out two more comparisons here. Here is the Spyderco Introvert, which you can see has a 
like literally half the thickness of the uh, the boker there. And then you can see here the SC Azula. The Azula is closer in thickness to this than the Spider Cruncher is. That's that's ridiculous. The Azula is a fixed blade knife. It needs to have a thick blade. The the Boker Plus Quaken is not targeted at a hard use camping outdoors kind of thing. It is a gentleman's knife, in my opinion. Um, so really, the whole thing should be, you know, that thick, maybe. It doesn't need to get up all up here. This is ridiculous. All right, so on to some conclusions. Um, do I like the knife? Yes. Would I pay $160 for it? No. I'd go with the mini version, personally. That's just my taste. Probably carbon fiber. But for what I paid for the knife, I'm really, really happy. If you're in love with this knife and you're okay with the weight, you don't care, you know, get it. It's it's not a bad knife. The only real detractor for me, in all honesty, is the the biggest thing is the weight and you know stuff that relates to that and the flipper tab, which you know you get used to, but you shouldn't have to. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. Um, keep an eye out for some upcoming videos. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep an eye out for another knife um, and some pin stuff. Thanks, guys. Bye.